This is what I've always used as my sand rammer. To be honest, it works pretty well, but I figure it's time to make a real official sand rammer. So let's do that. I'll be 3D printing the pattern, so I go to this website called Thingiverse, and it has everything. When I type in sand rammer, a bunch of options show up. I find one I like and download the file, and this one comes in two pieces, so it looks like it's made to be cast in sand. The printer does the work, and then I'll be ready to go. So I printed both sides. They fit together pretty well, but I'm thinking this is going to be maybe a little bit too small for what I typically use for sand casting. So I printed a bigger one, 145%, which was as big as I could fit on my printer. I didn't get good adhesion to the bed, and the tip here curled up. So I thought maybe I should raise the adhesion temperature of the bed. So I raised the adhesion temperature of the bed and the printing temperature of the PLA, and it became much worse. And that, I think, is beyond saving. So far I've got about 15 hours of printing time into this, but I'm gonna do it again. And this time I'm gonna print with a brim, so hopefully I don't get this curling up effect. Printing is an amazing technology, but there is a learning curve to it. Mainly just what are the settings you need to get a good print. So these two prints worked a lot better. They fit together perfectly. I'll just have to trim the brim off. Pattern came with these pegs too. They go in these little holes so I can make sure both parts are aligned. For some reason these pegs ended up being a lot longer than I need. So I just need to carefully shave those down about half the size. That's better. Now that the pattern's done, it's time to get the sand ready. So I put it in my mulling machine and get it nice and friable. Then I powder the pattern so the sand doesn't stick to it. We'll give this old hammer one last run. This hammer actually works really well. So long term, I'm gonna have to see which one I like better. Hammer versus sand rammer. Whoops. If there's no damage done, I can just put it back in and it's not a problem. I'll insert the pegs and get the other piece lined up. Forgot the powder the other side. I always forget something. If there's not enough powder in between layers, they end up sticking together and they're hard to pull apart. I actually had some powder on there and this might have been enough, but just to be sure I wanted to redo it. I recycle my Petrobond by adding my own oil back into it and sometimes it's a little sticky. So it's important to have enough powder. I had some sand break away on the edges, which isn't ideal, but with this piece, since I'm going to do a lot of grinding and sanding on the edges, I didn't really care. I'll fix it. I added a fairly large riser on the hammer end to try to cope with the metal shrinkage, but we'll see how that works. For this piece, I used some brass ingots. I made them from scrap metal, so I'm not really sure what the alloy is. I just know there's white smoke when I get it too hot, so I know it's got a lot of zinc. Some other pieces I put in there had a lot of junk in there, so there's a lot of dross to clean up.
it ended up drinking up a lot of metal. I let it cool completely before opening it. That avoids all the smoke you get otherwise. Well, we had some massive shrinkage issues. It shrinks? I was hoping this riser at the top would be big enough so when this cooled, this would stay molten and it would have molten metal to draw into it. That wasn't the case. I think the top solidified first. This was still molten. You can see a big pit where this drew down, but I also have a big pit here that drew down. The rest of it, however, looks pretty good. So I think we're gonna fill this. For that, we're gonna use some magic. I first need to cut off all my risers, but when I do, I then have welding rods I can use. Any cutoff from this casting will match the color exactly, so if I can weld it, you won't even notice it. However, as soon as I start, I realize why I don't cast with brass. The zinc gasifies at a low temperature. It sputters and pops. Brass is really hard to weld. I figured maybe I needed to clean it better because I couldn't get anything to penetrate into this big block of metal. I turned the amps up to the max, but it's still kind of a tough go. All that white smoke is the zinc vapor. This is not something I want to breathe in because you can get metal fume fever. I'm holding my breath right now. I decided to put on a mask and give it another try. One reason why I rarely cast with brass, the zinc is just such a pain to weld. Downright impossible for me. It's not gonna be perfect, but I did fill in the majority of the hole. So let's grind that off, smooth it up, and see what we got. I'll buff it with a wire wheel and that'll bring out some of the shine and color of the metal. I put on a finer belt to get rid of some of the deeper scratches from the coarse belt. However, inadvertently, it provided a lesson in safety. I'm glad this was just fine sandpaper. Had this been a different tool, the finger could have been gone. Accidents happen fast. With that, we'll call it done. Let's see how much it weighs. 2,585 grams and five pounds, 11 ounces. Well, there we go, an official casting sand rammer. Square part fits into the corners of the boxes. This chisel part, I don't know why people use that, but getting into the tight corners, I guess. It's over five pounds, so it's got some weight to it. I wasn't able to weld the brass perfectly, but that'll just be a reminder of metal shrinkage every time I use it. This side looks pretty good, though. Don't forget to come on back for the next project. Thanks for watching.